Welcome to the webinar titled Managed QD Mix, Simplicity Deploy and Managed Database in Azure Kubernetes Service, AKS, using QDB. I am Tapuji Chundrapal. Uh, I am a software engineer at, at App School and currently working at uh, in our Managed QDB project. So let's get started with the presentation. Uh, so these are the block contents of our today's session. Uh, the, at first, we are going to talk about DBAS and then uh, we are going to talk about what our managed QTB has to offer to its users. And then we are going to look at the workflow of our managed QTB. And after that, we are going to see a live demo where we will show, show you how you can use our uh, managed QTB uh, to provision your um, cluster and, uh, and how you can access that cluster from your uh, application. And at the end of this session, we are going to have a QA session where you can uh, ask uh, any of your queries about the session. So, uh, so what is DBAS? DBAS is basically stands for Database as a Service. So, uh, it is basically a cloud computing service model that uh, provides users with uh, access to a managed database system. So, in a DBAS model, the cloud service provider takes care of all, all the infrastructure maintenance and management tasks related to the database and allowing users to focus solely on their application and data rather than the underlying hardware and software. So um, in the demo part, we will show you how our managed QDB works. For, uh, for our demo, we need a Kubernetes. What we are going to do is now uh, create a Kubernetes cluster from scratch and deploy a database in it and access the database from an application running in another cluster. So for the demo today, we are going to use Microsoft Azure and we are going to create the cluster in uh, Azure Kubernetes Service or AKS as uh, creating a cluster from uh, scratch takes quite a bit of time. So we're going to start spinning up the from the scratch first and uh, we are going to uh, continue with the rest of the presentation. And after the presentation, in the demo part, we will uh, uh, we will see how, how can we access the database from an application that is running, running in another cluster. So let's, let's go ahead and create our uh, cluster from our Byte Builders console. So this is our Byte Builders console and uh, you can see the cluster list. I have already deployed or provisioned two cluster. One is application cluster and another is DB cluster. So um, now if you want to create a new cluster, you can um, uh, you can create it from import cluster, this button here, right here. So you can click it and uh, you can see there is plenty of uh, clouds provider that is available right now like AKS, EKS, GK, Linode, these versions. So you can select uh, the cluster from anywhere of these uh, options you want. Uh, in this case, we are going to create a cluster in AKS. So <clears throat> we're selecting AKS and uh, going to the next window. So uh, for creating a cluster, you will need a credential. So for that, uh, uh, if you don't have a credential, you, have, you need to create it from the create credential button. and. Uh, once you create the credential, uh, you can you need to select it and go to the next option. In this case, I have already <clears throat> created a credential, so I'm going to use that to create our cluster. So in uh, in here, we have two options. Either you can like uh, select a cluster cluster which is already like provisioned in our in uh, AKS, and like if you select it, you can you have to select like in AKS, uh, all the clusters uh, usually is under under a resource group, so you have to select the this is good for, let's say, so I, I select demo app cluster. Uh, there should be a cluster that is uh, provisioned under this resource group. So I can see the cluster has come up. It takes a few seconds to, yeah. Now I can, if I select it and go to cluster details, I can actually import the already pre-existing cluster. So uh, you can do that, but uh, in our case, we're going to show, show you how to, how you can create the cluster. Like you can create the cluster from here um, by clicking this button. So, uh, our cluster is going to be demo cluster live. So you have to give the necessary information about the cluster, like name or Kubernetes version. In this case, we're going to give it this. And you have to uh, mention the VNet CIDR of the cluster. Then, uh, uh, then uh, we have to select the region. And uh, after giving all the information, you need to create the cluster just by clicking the button. So in a few seconds, in this terminal, we will see that the cluster is started creating so while the cluster is getting started you can see all the logs from here here why um, like all the stuff that are in, in installing and the cluster logs you know, cluster creation logs 
from here. And uh, the class presentation takes a bit of time. We are going to continue with the rest of the presentation. So <clears throat> these are the these are the benefits of uh, DVATs. So uh, first one is uh, reduced infrastructure costs. So uh, with DBS, user can avoid upfront uh, hardware and software costs. Like when you try to set up a database, uh, you have a massive cost upfront. You need to buy your infrastructure and set up your database. But if you go with the DB provider, uh, you don't actually need to worry about the upfront costs. Also, user uh, save in operational costs uh, as the provider handles the database maintenance, backup, and security. Improve scalability and flexibility. So. When you use a managed database solution, you have uh, very much flexibility. Like uh, you have options to choose between uh, SQL and MySQL database. Like our KubeDB has provided uh, MySQL, PostgreSQL, uh, MongoDB, Redis, etc. Uh, and about the scalability part, if you don't use the managed database solution, then you have to scale the database manually. If you go with the provider, you don't need to worry about the scalability part as the provider will scale the database up or down on your demand. Then the high availability and disaster recovery. So most of the database solution provider comes up uh, with a disaster recovery solution. Uh, you, in our case, uh, we have stats for that. So the database provider will make sure that your database is highly available, even in terms of high traffic and also back up the database periodically so that in case of disaster scenario, the recovery is very much possible. And then comes the improved security. So <clears throat> if you set up your uh, own database, then you have to take all the security headaches, uh, security is on your own. But in case of managed database, that uh, device provider uh, prioritize data security and employ robust uh, measures to protect your data. Then comes the reduced maintenance and management overhead. So, in case, uh, it is one of the key benefits actually of DBS. So if you set up a, your database by yourself, you have a serious overhead of managing things. Like uh, you have to make sure that your machine is up and running, uh, your database is up and running. And if there is an update of the database you are using, then you have to do that manual. So also you will need to make sure that your database is scaling up during high traffic. So, but in case of management, uh, managed database, the database provider usually takes care of all the maintenance and management related overheads. Then there obviously, obviously comes the first time to market. So when you are choosing a uh, managed database provider, you can solely focus on your like strategic or uh, business logic part as the provider takes care of uh, all the uh, database related stuff. And uh, as a result, the pro product usually takes less time to less, less time, less time to re release. So this is an obvious uh, feature of uh, DBS. Then, uh, we are going to look at our what our managed cube DB has to offer to its user. The first one is uh, easy provisioning. Like uh, uh, currently, our cube DB comes up with uh, lots of features, but for using cube DB, you have to install the Helm charts, required Helm charts uh, in your cluster, then manage your database on your own so that it is up and running. And if you upgrade your database, then you have to do that manually. But like we have seen in the beginning, you can just uh, create the cluster uh, with the click of a button from our uh, Byte Builders console. So in that case, the obviously the uh, provisioning path is pretty pretty easy, and uh, uh, you can do that without taking much of headache of creating cluster. Then uh, then comes the offload operational headache. So this is one of the key point uh, because if you manage your database by yourself, uh, let's say even with KubeDB, you have to take a bit of operational headache like upgrading database, making sure the database's pod is up and running. But uh, in our managed cube DB, we take care of all of these headaches and make sure that your database is up and running 24 7. Then comes the work with public clouds uh, like AWS, GCP, Azure. So, currently for our uh, managed cube DB, uh, provisioning database cluster in most of the popular clouds like AWS, GCP, Azure, GCP is possible. Like we have seen in the beginning of the session, uh, how you can create any cluster from like all the providers that are available. And already in, in all of our previous webinar, uh, we have showed the, how you can create cluster and uh, provision your database and access that from uh, application cluster uh, uh, from, in, from our web builder sponsor for AWS. Now in this webinar, we are showing it for Azure. So in future, what we're going to do is we're going to extend the range, range of cloud providers. So from anywhere, you can provision or manage your database. Then comes the 
backup and recovery. So as a managed database provider, we'll also work on backup and recovery for you. So auto backup feature will be there for you, uh, for your database. Uh, all that you need to do is to enable the backup feature from our Bitbinders console. And using our product stash, we will take care of all the headaches of backup and recovery of your database. Then comes the security and compliance. So it is a concerning thing, uh, security and compliance. Uh, so uh, we are working hard so that uh, we can ensure high security and compliance to your database. Uh, as we are now using public clouds like AWS, GCP, Azure, uh, we are taking the full advantage of their firewall to make your database highly secure. Um, you also have the option for maintaining the access control of the database actually. So you, what you can do is you can tell us the IP whitelisting and we will configure your database accordingly. Then you can only access your database uh, from the from that instance only. So in a nutshell, we are trying our best to make your database as secure as possible. <clears throat> then comes the no vendor locking. So there are plenty of options for uh, cloud in our managed QDB to provision your database, which will get increased the timing. But so you can choose or switch between your preferable cloud without encountering significant barriers or dependencies. Let's jump into the um, workflow, how our managed QDB actually works. Uh, so for that, let's say you have provisioned a cluster from our Bitbinders console with three nodes. Uh, now, uh, in these three nodes, all the necessary components uh, like QDB stash, uh, which will required, uh, which is required for, for your database be up and running will be automatically installed. Or you don't have to take any OD. Uh, we will do that for you. So it will be automatically installed in your database. And uh, after the provisioning, after creating the cluster, after provisioning the database, uh, you need to tell us the configuration of your database. Like you need to tell us the basic configuration of your database. Like in the example, you can see that a uh, MongoDB database uh, with the mode of a replica set with three replica uh, for the production environment is shown. So after you tell us the configuration, we will create the database. Uh, and like in the picture, we can see that three more nodes each with the replica of uh, MongoDB database has come up. So uh, as each replica, so a, a single replica is running in each each uh, node. So as as e, as, uh, as uh, each replica is provisioned in a separate node, your database ports won't be affected by various problems that like occur in cloud, like noise enable problems. So after all the provisioning tasks are done, uh, we will tell you how you can actually access your database. Uh, you will be you will able to find the host name and auth secrets in our Byte Builders console, and using those information, you will be able to connect and uh, use uh, access and the database from your application. So, this was a high level overview of the workflow of the managed QDB and how you can use it. Uh, now we'll go into a bit deeper uh, in the workflow. So here we can see two clusters. One is a database cluster and another is application cluster. So the database cluster is running under the DB cluster vnet and the application cluster is running under the app cluster vnet. So both uh, vnets are running and running with the different side ranges. So now what we are going to do is we are going to create a peering connection. So you can see the vnets are connected. So uh, peering connection between the two vnets and uh, so that it becomes possible um, to access the database uh, from your application privately. In this case, in this case, you should be it should be made sure that the two units are running with different side range. Uh, like you can all do all of these like creating peering connection and stuff and create the cluster from all, all from our white builders console. So that that with being that being said, let's jump into the live demo where we we will show you how you can like uh, create the um, how you can access the database. So our uh, database that we have provisioned is currently in, is in st uh, creation stage. So let uh, while it is being created, let us uh, continue with the pre-existing um, uh, cluster that I have created before. So yeah, so these two clusters I have already created before the presentation. So. This is the demo DB cluster and this is the app cluster. What we are going to do now is we are going to access the DB cluster from the app cluster. So for that, uh, we are going to uh, install a Helm chart. We are going to install Helm chart for that and it's a cube config from here. So you can download the cube config right away from your from our UI. So I'm just downloading it. And now let's install the Helm chart. 
Before that, let's export the for the kubeconfig, the cluster. As you can see, uh, our cluster is actually self-provisioned, so we should be able to see the cluster. As you can see, we can see the cluster, and the cluster is self-provisioned. You can see the name of the cluster here. So now let's go ahead and install the Helm chart. So before that, uh, the what uh, using our Helm chart, what we are going to do is we are going to install the MongoDB, MongoDB database, uh, like we have, uh, we have shown in the presentation. Uh, so what here going to happen is like a new node will come up and uh, you will be uh, and, and the MongoDB database will be created in, in that will be provisioned in that node. So for that, let's just uh, watch all nodes here. So here uh, there is there is six nodes and uh, we have created a cluster with three nodes, but three of them are user and three of them are system. So we can actually use only three nodes. So yeah, after that, let's just watch this. Watch this and and also watch the and uh, we can get the machine pool from here. So there is actually there should be two machine pool. Yeah, there is two machine pool. One is uh, one is with three replica, another is with uh, three replica uh, because one is system and another is user. So when we deploy the deploy the uh, uh, deploy the MongoDB database, a new uh, new machine pool will come up. So let's just watch this as well. And also here we are going to look at the um, Yes, as well. So this is what the ports here. We are going to install the uh, MongoDB database in demo namespace. So this was the port of the demo namespace. So there is currently no resource in this uh, in this uh, namespace, but uh, once we install the helmchers, you will be able to see that a MongoDB pod has come up. So let's just uh, apply the uh, helm chart. It, uh, it will take a few seconds to install the helm chart. <clears throat> Now you can see the helm chart is installed and a MongoDB database has come up, which is in pending status because uh, our uh, new node is uh, like a machine pool has come up. So uh, once this uh, machine pool, uh, this machine pool is in uh, provisioning phase. So once this, uh, uh, once this, uh, uh, once this uh, machine pool gets into the running uh, running phase, uh, you will be able to uh, you, uh, the, this MongoDB pod will be able to uh, will be in uh, in running state as well. So uh, it, uh, this MongoDB pod is actually waiting for this node to come up. So and uh, uh, when this will be in uh, running state, a new node will also come up. Will join the uh, node pool. Uh, in the meantime, let us let us look at, look at the cluster that we have created at the beginning of the uh, session. So as you can see, uh, the cluster that we have created is is successfully is completed successfully. Now we are going to uh, we are let's we can like the cluster is clear, created. Now what are we going to do is we are going to import the cluster into our Byte Builders console. So let's just uh, you can see the logs from here. And uh, uh, let's go ahead and uh, import the cluster. As you can see, uh, the cluster is getting validated. So you can see the options uh, like what you have you want to install in your cluster. You can select it from here. So for uh, our uh, you can install the databases like UTB and also the backup and recovery from here. For the for the demo today, we are going to install only the databases like UTB and stuff. So let's uh, import it.
now uh, you can see the import is has started so now while uh, in this terminal you will be able to show uh, you you will be able to see like what uh, what is actually getting in, in, in installed into your cluster in this case we are seeing the logs like uh, we are we are uh, being transparent about what we are actually installing into your uh, into your cluster you can see all the things all the things that we are actually installing for importing your cluster and uh, you can see the logs from here it will take a few minutes to uh, done with the import uh, import uh, importing cluster so in the meantime let's go ahead uh, in, and see uh, see the connection how do you how you can connect so now you can see our uh, mongodb uh, node has come up finally it is in running state and at the same time after it is it, it is uh, it is in running state our uh, mongodb port is also initializing and at the same time you can see the node uh, a new node as uh, like uh, before that there was uh, six nodes now we have one more node pool db node that has come up and joined the uh, uh, pool of node now it is in pool, uh, pod is initial, getting initialized in the meantime uh, let's just uh, see and uh, see how uh, let's just go go into our app cluster and uh, download the cube config from here What we are going to do now is to is to uh, is to access that MongoDB port from our application cluster. For that, we need the uh, cube config of the application cluster. I'm going to download it and I have already pasted it in uh, issue cases. So uh, let's go ahead and export the. Export the cube config for our um, application cluster. Now you can see our MongoDB pod is running. So what we are going to do now is um, access that uh, MongoDB database from our application cluster. For that, uh, we need we need a peering connection. We need to uh, connect, uh, like we have so shown in the uh, presentation that we need to connect the DB cluster and the application cluster. For that, we are going to uh, going to do a peering connection. So let's create a peering connection. So this too has been created. The, uh, the peering connection is getting created. Uh, it is already synced, but it is in ready. Uh, uh, red, it is not ready yet, so it will take a few minutes to be in ready state. So, uh, in the meantime, let's uh, check out the cluster that we have created. So the cluster is uh, still uh, importing uh, the necessary stuffs. Uh, so uh, let's just wait for it, and we can see. We can actually see the. Uh, MongoDB port, port from our uh, Webinders console as well. So, yeah, if we select MongoDB, we should be able to see a uh, port here. Yeah, the, the port that is uh, provisioned here is actually showing in our database, uh, showing in our Webinders console. So uh, as we can see, our um, uh, our uh, peering is completed. It is true. So peering is uh, peering is done. Now what we are going to do is we are going to access the uh, application uh, class, uh, database from our application cluster. For that, uh, we are going to uh, create a job. You can see a job, uh, and the uh, and the IP of the here yeah, the IP is the same as the uh, IP of the of our node. So what we, what we have done is we have given the IP of the node and it is going to access the MongoDB that is running in another cluster. So let's go ahead and get this job in our application cluster. So if I get the pods now, I can see that uh, the pod is, uh, pod has been completed. Uh, the, uh, so we are going to see the logs of this board. So as we can see, we have successfully pinged the MongoDB database running in this 
IP. So from our application cluster. So that's how you can actually access your database uh, running in another cluster from uh, from your application cluster without taking much of a headache. And uh, uh, we can actually see that from our byte readers console as well. So if we go to the uh, application cluster. Let's go to the application cluster. And if we go to the uh, bots, so in our application cluster, we enter the pod. Uh, so if I see the log from here, I should be able to see the same thing. Like it has been to the uh, MongoDB database. Yeah, it's the same thing. So we have successfully uh, connected to the MongoDB database. So that's how you can actually uh, access your database from your application cluster. And in the meantime, the uh, database cluster that we have created previously at the start of the session, that it has finally done with all the provisioning stuff. Now we can go to the cluster details and see, uh, see our created cluster. So you can see that all the all the necessary stuff, uh, all the feature set uh, are, has been uh, like uh, is there. You can like if you I, I I have only installed the databases, but if you want, you can install the backup and recovery just clicking this button, enable button right here. So that's how you can use it. And uh, if I go to the console, all the clusters, the new cluster should be there and uh, it should be in active state. Uh, this one I have created now. So it should be in active state. Yeah, it is in active state. You can iterate through it and you can use it now uh, without taking much of a headache. So that's all about the uh, all about the live demo. Now, uh, if you have any more queries about the session or anything you want to know about our managed key product, product, uh, you can ask here. Yeah, so thanks for the demo, Tapujit. Uh, wanted to ask you a quick question. Uh, so, uh, so you just showed us the MongoDB operator, but uh, what are the databases are supported in this way? Uh, so as we can see that uh, uh, in our data store, that all the databases like Elasticsearch, like there's a plenty of databases that are actually supported in our, uh, in this database. So uh, in this cluster, so you can install it for all from here actually. So these are the list that are that are supported here. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the questions.